Hi and welcome to another lesson of the TI-84 plus CE student course. In this particular lesson we're focusing on some further calculations. So these actually might be things that you maybe haven't seen in class before uh, and they're things that kind of push the boundaries a little bit of the, um, the course that we're looking at at the moment. Um, however they are really interesting things to keep in mind uh, for maybe later on at school or you might be able to find them useful in some of the things that you're already learning. So some of the things we're going to look at are focusing on the math menu and finding some of the different calculation templates that are available in that math menu, using the alpha F2 calculation quick keys and some of the locations of other useful keys as well, such as I and E. And we're only going to touch on those briefly because again, they are things that generally come up more uh, in the senior school. So looking at our first example for today, we've got a two litre carton of milk that's in the shape of a cube. We want to know what would be the dimensions of this box rounded to the nearest centimetre. So the first thing that I need to know is what's the volume of a cube. So I know a cube has all the same length, width and height. So my volume would be the length times the width times the height, giving me x cubed in this particular case. Um, I also know that I'm looking at a two litre carton of milk, but I know that a one litre carton is equal to 1000 centimetres cubed. And it's important to make that conversion because we are looking for the dimensions uh, closest to the nearest centimetre. So I know the, the number that gives, the, the number that when cubed gives me 1000 is 10. And I know that because 10 to the power of three, I'm gonna use the little hat button that's on top of that division, a little exponent button, and I'm gonna type in a three, 10 to the power of three or 10 times 10 times 10 gives me 1000. Um, now the question wasn't asking me about 1000 centimeters cubed or one liter, it was asking me about 2000. So I'm just gonna play around with a couple of numbers. I've already done these before, so it's not too much playing, but you guys maybe wanna try with a couple more. Uh, I'm gonna start off with 12. So 12 to the power of three, that gives me, so that would be a length, a width and a height, all of 12. That gives me 1728. So not quite there, but we are actually on the right track. Uh, the next number I'm gonna try is 13. So 13 to the power of three. Now that one gives me 2,197, even a little bit closer. So I'm definitely looking at a number that's somewhere in between 12 and 13. So how do I find what that number is? Well, I'm gonna to go to my math menu. So again, the math menu just below the alpha key. I'm gonna hit in there and the first uh, section that comes up is a lot of these kind of calculation templates that I was talking about before. So you can see there the cubed root, that's actually under that number four, um, but I'm gonna go one further and look at the number five, because this is the one that you would use if you wanted any root. So whether it's a fourth root or fifth root or a hundred root, something you could use that number five template there. I'm gonna hit enter on number five. Um, and then in my screen, I can type in three, to um, identify that that's the cubed root. And then I'm trying to find what number when cubed gives me 2000. So I'm putting the 2000 uh, inside the root, hitting enter and I get 12.599. Now my question wanted me to round that. So rounding you can also do via the math menu. So if we go into the math menu, I'm going to go one, instead of staying in the math section, now I'm going to go across to the number. So I'm going to use the navigation keys to scroll across to the right one. And then I'm going to go down to where it says round. Now, one of the things I love um, using most on the 84 is using the answer function. And that takes the answer from the row above and I don't have to retype it. So if I use second and the negative sign, that gives me the answer that I just found. And then I'm gonna use the comma and I'm actually gonna, we're gonna start off, you know the question asked to round to the nearest centimeter, but I'm gonna actually round to the nearest millimeter first um, and then we'll do the centimeter next. So if I'm rounding to the nearest millimeter, I wanna find the first decimal point. So I'm rounding to one decimal place, hit enter and I get 12.6. Now the question wanted me to round to the nearest whole number. So in this case, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna find that rounding function again. So back into math number down to the second one for rounding. Um, but in this case, instead of using the answer, I'm going to scroll up a couple and I'm going to highlight the answer that I got before. I'm going to press enter to bring that down and then I'm rounding to the nearest whole number so that's to zero decimal places. So there's my number there, 13. Last thing I just wanted to highlight with this example is the fact that we can actually find that uh, nth root t, 
template um, in another location on the calculator as well. So if I use what we call the quick keys function, which is pressing alpha and then using any of those graphing keys at the top there. So uh, the math kind of the shortcut math menu is under window or F2. So if I go alpha and then F2, that brings up my kind of mini math menu. Um, and I can see that the nth root is that number six there. So if I press number six, that would bring in that template as well. My second example is another volume uh, situation. So in this case, we're looking at a spherical balloon that has a radius of 40 centimeters. And our person who's swelling up the balloon can exhale four liters of air with each, with each breath. So how many breaths will he need to inflate the balloon? So the first thing we want to do is find the volume. So again, I know my volume of a balloon or any kind of sphere uh, is four thirds uh, pi r cubed. Um, and again, I know my radius in this case is 40 centimeters. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do in here is I'm going to input that uh, equation, but with my radius substituted in. So to get that fraction, that four thirds, again, we go alpha and then the key directly next to it uh, on the right, so that X button there. And I'm going to type in four thirds times by pi second, and the exponent key gives me pi, and then times by 40 to the power of three using that exponent key again. Pressing enter, and that gives me 268,082 centimeters cubed. So pretty big balloon. Uh, to convert that into liters, I'm gonna divide it by a thousand. Um, and again, another really nice thing here is you don't actually have to, um, if, you, if you just automatically press any kind of operation key, it does that to the answer on the roll above. So if I just press the division sign, that answer comes up straight away. So I'm gonna divide that by a thousand. So that gives me 268 litres. Um, and then our friend John, who was blowing up the balloon, he could blow up at a rate of four litres per breath. So if I divide that answer again by four, that means it's gonna take him 67 breaths to blow up that balloon. Okay, last two examples we're gonna look at. The first one is 10 to the power of what is equal to 500. And I've labeled these A and B because they are pretty intrinsically linked. Okay, so we know that 10 to the power of two gives us 100, and we know that 10 to the power of three gives us 1,000. So 10 to the power of something equaling to 500 must be somewhere in between two and three. Uh, but we can find what that number is exactly by using this log key. So if we take a log of 500, now the standard log uses a base of 10. So that means that the number that you're looking for, the base of your power um, is a 10. So that's already in there for us. And we'll look at the exa next example is one where there isn't a base of 10. Um, but if I hit enter on that, my answer gives me 2.69897, uh, etc. Now, if I wanted to double check that this answer is right, I could do 10 to the power of, now again, I could use that answer key um, from before. So second, the negative sign, put the answer in, or I could highlight and bring that and copy that answer down. Um, but if I press enter on here, I ended up with 500 as my result. So I can see that that's perfect. My last question, what is the value of X if two to the power of X equals 100? Okay, so now in this particular case, two to the power of x equals to 100. My base is now not 10, it's another number instead. So I need to use a different template rather than just that standard log one there. So I can access um, my other template by using my math quick keys. So if I go alpha and then uh, press the window button, I can see here number five gives me the log base where I can change what that base number is. So if I go to number five, um, I can bring that in, I can edit that to add in a two. And in this case, I'm finding what two to the power of what gives me a hundred. So that hundred goes in the brackets there, enter, and that gives me 6.64. Um, now again, I could uh, check to see how good my answer is here and raise that two to the power of 6.64. This time I'm gonna copy that and bring it down, press enter, and that gives me a hundred. Um, I could also access that other template again using the math menu, um, but it's right at the bottom of the math menu. So I do have to do quite a bit of scrolling to get all the way down there. And that's why it's easier to find it. Uh, sorry, it's that one there, that A, uh, if I just go one up. Um, so that's why it's easier to access that one via the quick keys function. The last thing I did want to mention just really, really briefly before our video finishes is where you can find 
E and I uh, on your calculator. And again, these things aren't things that you're probably going to look at um, in uh, middle school or even even if you don't necessarily access those kind of higher levels of maths in senior school. Um, so we can find E by doing second and the division sign and we can find um, Euler's number there. Uh, and then we can find I by doing second and the decimal point. So there's another couple of buttons that you might need at some stage. Alrighty, uh, it's been great having you guys here today and I'll see you next time.